In topic 5.1, we're going to learn how to classify triangles using their angles and their sides. So um, to classify using angles, you would look at the individual angles and you'd see they're going to be acute, obtuse, or right. If it's acute, it could also be classified as equiangular. So an acute triangle is one that has three acute angles. Remember, acute means um, less than 90 degrees. So you would have three angles that are less than 90 degrees. Equiangular is also going to have three acute angles, but they're all going to be 60 degree angles. They're all congruent to each other. Obtuse triangle will have one obtuse angle. Remember, obtuse means greater than 90 degrees. So here you'll notice there's one that's greater than 90. And a right triangle is going to have a right angle, which is equal to 90 degrees. So you'll either see a 90 degree angle or that little right angle that indicates it's 90 degrees. So here we can I classify them based on their angles. Number one has a 90 degree, so it's a right triangle. Number two has one angle that's greater than 90 degrees, so it's an obtuse triangle. Three here, all angles are 60, so it's acute, but more specifically, you would call it equiangular because they're all equal or congruent. On number four, these are all less than 90. So this is like an acute triangle. On number five, it has a 90 degree angle, so it's a right triangle. And on number six, one of these angles is greater than 90 degrees, so it's an obtuse triangle. Here we're looking at a picture where it has all of the little triangles inside a bigger one. So I'm going to kind of highlight so we can look at these individually. So let's start with triangle ABD. ABD would be this one right here. So let's highlight that triangle. As you can see, all the sides are congruent. Well, if every single side is congruent, then every single angle is also going to be congruent. And it's going to be equiangular. Let's go ahead and look at the next triangle that it's talking about, ABC. Triangle ABC would actually end up being this big triangle. So if we look at that big triangle, you'll notice that on the inside, there's a right angle. So since there is a right angle, this is a right triangle. Triangle EDC would be this little one right here. If you notice, it also has a right angle, so this is also a right triangle. And the last one, BDC, would be this triangle here. We look at that carefully. Don't get confused because you see a right angle. If you look at that angle carefully, it actually goes from here to here. So it's actually greater than 90 degrees, making this an obtuse triangle. You can also classify triangles based on their sides. So if you're classifying based on their sides, there's three types of triangles. If all the sides are congruent, remember this is the symbol for congruent, then it's an equilateral triangle. If two sides are congruent, it's isosceles. And if all the sides are different, then it's scaling. So if we look at question one here, all the sides are different, so this is a scalene triangle. On question two, all the sides are the same, so it's equilateral. On question three, they're all different, so it's scalene. For question four, two of the sides are congruent. So since two sides are congruent, it's an isosceles triangle. On question five, two sides are congruent. So this one's also isosceles. And on question three, all the sides are congruent, so it's equilateral. And I just want to say that equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangles because they do have two sides congruent. It's just more um, specific to call them equilateral because all the sides are congruent. So if we look at the triangle within triangles here, let's start with ABE. ABE would be this one. And this time we're looking at the sides. So we have one side that's 9, one that's 8 root 2. Since these sides are congruent, this side's 8. All those sides are different, so triangle ABE is a scalene triangle. 
If we look at triangle EDB, that's this one right here. One of the sides is 8 root 2, one of the sides is 8. This side would also be 8. So since two sides are congruent, this is an isosceles triangle. If we look at triangle EBC, one of the sides is 8 root 2. This side's congruent to this side, so it's also 8. But here we have a long side. So this long side would be 8 plus 8, or 16. So all the sides are different, making this a scaling triangle. And now if we look at our last triangle, DBC. DBC is this little one right here. Even without marking that all of them are 8, this means that they're all congruent. So since they're all marked congruent, this is an equilateral triangle. Now, um, you can also use algebra to solve if you know things like that your triangle is equilateral or if you know it's isosceles. So we're going to look at some examples using algebra. So this first example asks us to find x and the length of each side. They're telling us the triangle is equilateral. So equilateral means that every side is congruent or equal to each other. Since all the sides are congruent here, you can set any two sides equal to each other and solve for x. Again, the reason I can do that is because it's equilateral, which means all sides are congruent or equal. So I'm just going to take these two sides here because they're congruent. Again, I could choose any two. And I'm going to write an equation where I set them equal to each other. Remember, if you have an x on both sides, you want to get rid of one of those. I'm going to get rid of the 2x because it's smaller. So I'm left with positive 2 equals 3x minus 4. If you look here, remember x is stuck to 3, so I need to get rid of that 4 first. So I'm going to do plus 4 to both sides. So I get 6 equals 3x. And now I can get rid of the 3 by dividing. So instead of 3 times x, I divide 3. Now x is by itself. x is 2. So that's part of our answer. The other part of this question wanted us to actually... Um, find the length of each side. So what I can do now is I can plug in 2 for any x that I see there. So for example, for 3x, this could become 3 times 2, which is 6. Now you could take the time to plug this into every side, but since I know this is an equilateral triangle, all sides are equal, all sides are going to end up being 6 if I plug them in correctly. So I'm just going to list the measures of each side. Here, side RS or SR doesn't matter how you word it, is equal to 6 units. Side RT or TR is equal to 6 units. And side ST or TS is also equal to 6 units. So again, because it was equilateral and all the sides were equal, I didn't have to plug into every side. That would just be giving myself more work. On this next question, we want to find Y and the length of each side. This time it's isosceles with AB equal to BC. So here we can't just choose any two sides. It's isosceles, we have to do the two sides they say are equal. So AB would be this side right here. And BC would be this side over here. So I'm going to set 4Y equal to 3Y plus 2. Because those are congruent since it's an isosceles triangle. Now I have Y on each side, so I need to get rid of those. I'm going to get rid of the 3Y. So I get 1y equals positive 2, or y equals 2. So that's my answer for y. Now I need to know the length of each side. So if I plug it into side AB right here, for y I'm going to plug in 2, I get 8. And since this is isosceles, I know that the side across from it, BC, is also 8. However, I need to plug it into the bottom because AC was not congruent to those sides. So this becomes 3 times 2, or 6. So my three sides, I have AB equal to 8 units, BC equal to 8 units, and AC equal to 6 units.